This is how you can get a high paying job in cybersecurity in 2024. So when I graduated college, I started my first job in a cybersecurity rotational program, making $115,000 per year working in the New York metro area. And even though New York is a very high cost of living city, I still think this is a very, very high salary for a entry level person with no previous cybersecurity experience. And in this video, I'll be covering all the tips that I use to get this job. And I really hope it will help those of you who are currently in my shoes five years ago. Based on various different job sites, including Glassdoor, Salary, US News, and ZipRecruiter, the average salary for an information security analyst ranges from about $70,000 to $110,000 per year. In this video, we'll be covering how to increase your chances of getting the highest salary possible in your cybersecurity role, as well as what I would consider to be the three pillars of starting a career in cybersecurity, which specifically includes certifications, technical experience, and job preparation. And with that, I also want to discuss Clara's Way's cybersecurity course. This course offers a great opportunity for both experienced professionals and those new to the field. Thanks to its part-time structure and flexible schedule, you can develop your cybersecurity skills even with a busy work schedule. Based on my previous experience working as a cybersecurity analyst, the foundational concepts and hands-on practice and learning that you get in this course is a great way to help grow your skill set in cybersecurity. And the educational model and support services offered by Clara's Way are a great way to help you get your foot in the door starting a cybersecurity career, as well as, of course, training that you'll receive from industry experts in their specific fields. At Clara's Way, you work with professional instructors to apply theoretical knowledge to real-world scenarios, which in turn helps you bring your cybersecurity skills to life. As part of Clara's Way's career management system, you are receive professional support in resume writing, strengthening your LinkedIn profile, and improving your interview skills. This ensures that not only are you technically proficient, but you're also a strong candidate during the HR and hiring process to hiring managers and recruiters. And now I want to talk specifically about the curriculum and certifications that you can expect to get after completing the Clara's Way cybersecurity course, which really brings us all together in a comprehensive learning plan, specifically in preparation for your CompTIA Security Plus certification exam. If you watch any of my previous videos on how to become a cybersecurity analyst, how to start a career in cybersecurity, you know that the CompTIA Security Plus is the certification that I recommend the most for beginners. You don't need any previous experience to take this exam, but it really is one of the keys to getting your first job in cybersecurity, whether you're starting from a non-technical background or you're starting from IT or any other role in tech. So being able to prepare for your CompTIA Security Plus as part of a course that you're already taking is already a win-win. And on top of that, the course's Cybersecurity Operations Center or CSOC experience also gives you that real-world SOC or Security Operations Center experience that you would be getting in a real-world job as a SOC analyst. And the Claris Way Cybersecurity course can provide that foundational and hands-on learning. And in terms of the cost of the program, Claris Way offers flexible payment options, as well as several alternatives for covering the cost of the course itself. You can also get a direct discount by applying and paying for the course upfront, or you can opt in for an installment plan. There are also educational credit options with 0% interest up to 24 months. And if you prefer to pay for the program after graduating, that is also an option available. Claris Way provides the opportunity to finance your education with monthly payments based on your income after you graduate. For more information about Claris Way and their cybersecurity program, you can check out the links in my description. Thank you to Claris Way for sponsoring this portion of the video. First, let's start with the basics. So in your early career, you're most likely going to be a generalist, which means you're working on a lot of different areas. Maybe even the study material and the resources that you're learning also tend to be in multiple different niches. For example, maybe one day you're focusing on reversing, another day focus on defensive security, and then you find yourself interested in GRC. Now, while these are all great areas in cybersecurity to learn more about, I do think that even for entry-level cybersecurity roles, there still tends to be a little bit of niching when you start to look at job applications. For example, even if you're looking at a very general security analyst role, there's probably something in that job application that hints to what kind of role this is. For example, they may list tools that are specifically for SOC analysts or the defensive side of cybersecurity, or it may be a role that focuses more so on the infrastructure or networking side. But I do think that to make your resume as cohesive and coherent as possible to a recruiter, to a hiring manager, pick a specific niche or area in cybersecurity to show to recruiters plainly and simply that, hey, I'm Sandra and I'm interested in defensive security roles. I'm interested in an SOC analyst role. I've used these SOC tools. I've done SOC mock simulations. I've had experience using SIMs. I built my own SOC home lab. This kind of resume compared to another resume where you have red team experience, you have blue team experience, maybe you throw in a course on GRC. It won't be as helpful to a recruiter compared to a resume that's straight to the point with the experience that you have for a specific role in cybersecurity. And I know I've talked about how I'm very much a generalist and I enjoy being a generalist. I like dabbling in a bunch of different things. And that was another reason why my first job in cybersecurity, which was a rotational program, was really awesome because I got to test out many different roles in cybersecurity. And that is, of course, another route that you can go down. But I do think that niching down, at least to some extent, will really help your job odds, which also will make it easier for you to push for a higher salary when you're negotiating, when you do start getting those job offers. Because you're still somewhat specialized in a specific area in cybersecurity and in the skill set, 
that the company is looking for. Next thing really quick is to apply on the right job sites. Personally, I try to stay away from oversaturated job listings and posts that have that one click easy apply because that just means that there's going to be thousands of candidates and making your resume stand out out of thousands of people is a lot harder than directly applying to a company's website, maybe with a few hundred or less candidates. And that just makes it a whole lot easier to get noticed by the HR team, by the hiring manager. I also created a free cybersecurity beginner's guide for anyone who's interested or needs a roadmap on where exactly to get started, what sort of patience to take. And that is also where I include my list of job portals and job sites that I recommend. And you can download that roadmap guide for free, linked in my description. All right, so now that we've discussed all this, let's go into the three pillars of the cybersecurity entry-level job search. All right, so first things first is certifications. I've already talked about the Security Plus in this video, and I can link some videos in my description on how I pass my Security Plus. I won't repeat myself, but if you take away anything from this video, it's to take your Security Plus. And then number two is hands-on technical experience. You can get this from courses, boot camps, your personal projects, open source tooling, as well as a lot of cybersecurity tools that have community editions or student licenses that you can use for free. So you don't have to be affiliated with a company to be able to use these tools. And that's also a great way to add those tools and skills onto your resume so that it can get past those resume scanners and actually get in front of a real person to be reviewed. At this point in your career, you're really trying to get the most hits on your resume to be able to get past the automated resume scanning round. And that also typically includes a lot of keywords that you have to include onto your resume. You can look at different job listings for the roles that you're interested in, let's say an SOC analyst. And if they want experience using SIEMs, Wireshark, or if you're on the offensive side looking at junior pen testing roles and they want experience using Nmap, Berksuite, Bloodhound, maybe even Metasploit, these are all great ways to get information on the specific tooling that companies use and also for the specific tooling that, that are popular and overlap across multiple different companies so that you can take that into consideration when you're deciding what areas that you want to learn, as well as of course, what tools you want to learn. I'll also have videos linked in my description on beginner cybersecurity projects that you can work on that look really great on your resume on top of any existing bootcamp degree or course experience that you already have. But number three on this list is the job preparation. Now, if you're part of a bootcamp or degree program, they likely have some kind of career services that can help you with resume prep, mock interviews, LinkedIn, as well as just overall navigating the job application process. But I also have lots of videos on creating a cybersecurity resume from scratch, networking, going to career conferences, and how to stand out to your recruiters. Two things I would highly recommend. First, it's the fact that you really want to utilize your network. And I know people say this all the time, but I really do think your network is one of the most powerful tools that you can use to find a job because you never know whose friend of a friend is going to be hiring for an entry-level cybersecurity role. And honestly, applying to 100 jobs for a cybersecurity role compared to getting one or two referrals for a cybersecurity role makes a very, very big difference to helping you stand out. It's kind of like getting put on a short list and getting your resume directly to the hands of a actual person compared to just being in the general admissions line. And you'd really be surprised how many people are willing to give you a referral or help you on the lookout for a specific role that may match your interest and your skill set. And you would never know unless you put yourself out there. And I know it can be really daunting to put on LinkedIn that you're looking for a job or that you're open to work, but at the end of the day, that is the thing that makes the most difference. And the network effect is much stronger than you may think, even if you're not very active on LinkedIn or maybe if you don't even have an account, I would start one today. This is your homework after watching this video. I've actually recently started posting on LinkedIn about a month ago. So if anything, I'm open to being your first connection. Feel free to connect. I have my LinkedIn linked in my description. Someone let me know how many times I say a link to my description in this video. But the second thing is mock interviews. There are services I found on Fiverr that help you conduct a mock interview from people who are actually working in cybersecurity. And that is a great option, but you can also sit down with a friend, a family member that you trust. And there are many, many practice cybersecurity interview questions that you can find online. In fact, you can easily Google the list of top 50 or top 100 cybersecurity interview questions for beginners or entry-level roles, and that'll give you an idea of the types of questions that they'll ask you. Usually interviews are going to be technical, but of course there are some behavioral components of that interview, and you want to practice both. I would do one or two mock interviews going through some common cybersecurity interview questions. You can set up a timer, use a star method, you can dress professionally as comfortable as you can be, as if it were a real interview. And this really helps you get into the mindset so that when you start going into your first interviews, you won't be as nervous because nothing can really get rid of those butterflies, but I really do think that practice makes perfect. And if you go into that interview not preparing for the types of questions that the interviewer is going to ask, then it may not be as good of an experience than if you did one or two mock interviews before you went in there, which will also help lower your anxiety at least a little bit. Last but not least, I want to discuss negotiations and salary expectations. So I believe I've made a video on negotiating for your salary, but the main thing is to keep in mind that a lot of salaries on online job portals aren't going to be as up to date as they are today. For example, in my first role out of college, I was making $115,000 per year, which was for an entry level position, but it is also much higher than the average salary for an information security analyst that you can find on Glassdoor or salary.com. And that is something you want to note because even if you look up a 
security analyst or an SOC analyst role at XYZ company, even if you're super exact to the city or the state that you're in that you'll be working in, you can't always trust the numbers that you see online because those salaries may not be kept as up to date at what companies may currently be paying. And sometimes candidates will get a job offer, see that it's about the same as, as the average salary that they've seen on, on a very standard career website, and then just accept the offer without negotiating. If you think about it this way, this is another reason why so many people switch jobs because your salary stagnates after some time. For example, most people after a year are going to get the typical 3% increase in salary adjusted for inflation. Of course, we see nowadays that inflation can be much higher than just two to 3%. So oftentimes this increase isn't even beating inflation. And if you're working at a company for a year, you may not be up for promotion yet. And you may also not be up for a raise. So the main question to ask yourself is, would you be okay with the salary after two years working in the company if it weren't going to change much? Let's say it does a typical two or 3% increase. And then maybe after two to three years, you go for your first promotion or your first raise. Would you be okay with that salary for the next two to three years? And if the answer is no, then it really doesn't hurt to negotiate. Even if it's just talking to your recruiter, selling yourself a bit more, pushing your skill set. Even a $5,000 increase in the salary negotiation can mean a lot throughout two to three years. And most of the time, there's always room to negotiate. And this is coming from someone who had no idea what they were doing when they were first negotiating for their first role out of college. And I still push myself to do it. And that is something I still do not regret to this day. It does not hurt you. It can only help you. And companies aren't going to rescind your offer. I know that's what a lot of people think, but that is just not the case. If you are their top candidate and they're already giving you an offer, they're not just going to rescind your offer because you wanted to negotiate for an extra 5k. All right, so that is it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. For anyone who is just starting out and breaking into their career in cybersecurity, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you guys have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll be happy to get back to you. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.